Hello, it's Andrew from Real Speak here again, and this is another video that I've dug out from my archives. Um, this video was primarily aimed at, aimed at teachers, but it's also a really good learning experience for students as to how the present tenses interact in English. Here we're going to look at the present continuous and the present simple. And no, we're not going to follow what the textbooks normally dictate by looking at the present simple first and then the present continuous. I'll explain more of this in the video. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I'm here today to begin an, introduction, an introductory series about teaching grammar um, and how to do a little bit more out of your textbook. Um, a lot of teachers use textbooks. I explained this in a previous video. Um, what I'm going to assume in this video is that uh, we've already introduced some of the grammatical points of the students in a real context, either via a reading activity or some listening, but they understand the general idea. They've got the gist of what this grammar means. And today I'm talking about present tenses, okay? So once we've given them the introduction, they've got the gist, they understand generally what it means, we can give them some more specific examples so they begin to form a better idea of what this uh, grammar is trying to do. Then we move into the analysis and systemization part. So with this, I'll normally go back through some of the verbs with the students using the board to check their understanding and to further develop it so that they understand how this grammar works. I'm not going to do this, and I never do this in the order the textbooks follow, i.e. present simple, present continuous. I begin with the present continuous first. The reason being, when we're speaking in English in the present tense, we tend to use the present continuous probably more than the present simple. And it's one that my students here in Spain find difficult to understand why I'm using a, an ING on the end of verbs, a gerund. Um, when in Spanish this doesn't happen, the yendo is not used so much in the present. So it's an opposite to Spanish. Um, so I'm gonna try and explain this, show how I'd normally do this in a class. So first of all, the class that I would do this for would be for beginners up to probably intermediate level. Um, with the intermediate level, it's a kind of reinforcement, a recycling activity with the sort of beginners or elementary level students. It's actually teaching them something new, but using words that they already understand, okay? So the first thing I would do is get a pen. <clears throat> and then I would ask my students, who are not here right now, um, just to tell me some verbs in English, some action verbs, yeah? I want doing verbs, things that we do. And we might construct a list of things, something like, to begin with, the verb um, play. Okay, so we've got play. The second one they might give could be something like drink or write. And we're beginning to move. We go around the room and each student can tell me a verb. So I could have perhaps next read and listen. Um, I want another couple, so we get another couple of students to do this. They might come up with things like go travel and watch. Okay, so you can see those on the screen there. We've got play, drink, write, read, listen, go, travel, watch. Okay. <clears throat> Next part. By this time, the students have all been taught or they're aware of the verb to be. So in which case, I'll go back to the board with perhaps a different colour of pen and I'll put something like I am, and then elicit the rest of the verb, or get the students to tell me the rest of the verb individually. So again, the repeating, the revising, and in some cases helping each other to remember this verb if they've forgotten it. So obviously we'll get to I am, you are, he is, she is, it is, we are, you are, in plural, and they are. That's the first two parts done. Now, 
This time I might use a gesture, like a confused face with the students, as I mentioned in the big long video, which was the introduction to methodologies. Um, and I'll say to them all, I am play. Does this work? How can I change this? And I might get somebody who says, well, it's I am playing. Okay, so I am playing. And we add the ing to the verb. You are drink? Well, no, it's you are drinking. He is right? No, he is writing. I'm emphasizing to do this, we remove the e and add ing. Okay, because so the verb ends with e. Um, read becomes, as we know, reading. Listen becomes listening. Go becomes going. Travel. If we're teaching UK standard English, not the American variety, again we emphasise that we double the L and add the ING, okay? And watch watching. Okay, so now we have I am playing, you are drinking, he is writing, she is reading, it is listening, we are going, you are travelling, they are watching, okay? These are not complete sentences, so I want a little bit more from my students, yeah? So, we'll take the pen again. I'm playing what? And I can guarantee that 99% of the time, the next word from any group of students is going to be football. Okay, so I'm playing football. You are drinking, and it could be water. He is writing a message. Normally these days they'll say a WhatsApp or a text or an email or something like this. She's reading a book. Some of the kids will come up with comics, maybe magazines, things like this, but generally it's a book. It is listening to music. Always listening to is emphasized. Okay. We are going, ah, let's go on holiday. So we're going on holiday. You are traveling to, quite often here they'll say Valencia because that's where we live, it's the nearest city, but for the purposes of this, I'm gonna put you are traveling to New York. I've never been to New York, but I would love to go. Um, and they are watching, well, television. Okay. So now we have some complete structures in the present continuous, okay? For things we're doing now. So now I'll ask them some of these key words to note that we're talking in the present tense, okay? So again, change the color of the pen. I am playing football now, okay? You are drinking water right now. He is writing a message at the moment. Okay. She is reading a book today. Yeah. And it is listening to music just now. So by adding these phrases on the end of the sentences, we know that we're talking in the present tense. Um, and if the students don't understand these, if they've never come across them, then I will explain to them what these words mean, okay? Um, so we have the green pen, which we use to denote that we're talking here in the present. Okay, now I'll choose a red pen. Because as we know, we can also use the present continuous, not just to talk in the present, we can use it to talk about things in the future, things we've got planned. So we're going on holiday tomorrow with my squeaky pen. You are traveling to New York next week. And they're watching television on Saturday, for example, and we can explain next week, next month, next year, on Saturday, at the weekend, 
And there are a wide variety of phrases we can put here, but the key concept is that the red pen here denotes future. So it's a two for one. Now the students have got the concept. They're analysing this grammar and they can understand that they can apply it to talk about things that they're doing right now in the present and things that they plan to do in the future, which again is a step away from textbooks because they don't often do this. But as I said in the introductory video to this, we're trying to create language users here, not little grammarians. We want to create people who can use the language and use it confidently. And this is how English is actually used. So I believe that it's a good technique to use to get them using the language. So, not enough of that. <clears throat> Obviously here, we've got a nice affirmative structure, okay? And depending on the class, this could take up to 20 minutes to do, especially if some of them are studiously copying it down so they remember it, especially the younger children when they get homework from school, because quite often if they're doing the homework at home, the parents can't help them. So something like this is really good for them. Um, and I'll say to them, okay, we've got the affirmative. Now we need to look at the interrogative. And they're like, oh no, not another 20 minutes on this. But as we know, it's really easy. So I am playing football now, let's make it negative. And from the sort of younger elementary beginner students, you get a load of puzzled looking faces. Quite simply, again, it's not. You are not drinking water right now. He is not writing a message at the moment. She is not reading a book today. It is not listening to music just now. We are not going on holiday tomorrow. Oh no, you are not traveling to New York next week. That's not good, but you're traveling to Venice instead. So that's okay. They are not watching television on Saturday because on Saturday there is nothing worth watching on the television. And now we have the negative structure as well, okay? To finish this, we'll often take the verb to be now and just, I'm going to invert it. You know, the students, some of them understand this because they've got the gist of it. Um, but the questions need to be practiced as well to lead into the next activity for the repetition and recycling, okay? So we'll ask them, how do we make this um, a question? And we'll put, am I? Are you, is he, is she, is it, are we, are you, and are they? So this gives them the structure of the question, okay? If I'm going to ask questions, which I'm going to do in a moment with the students in the class, and I'm going to get them to ask each other questions as well, they need to know how to respond. So the simple question, are you drinking water right now? Well, obviously the simple answer, yes, I am, or no, I'm not. It may be a question like, are you traveling to New York next week? And pff, am I, aren't I? Well, I don't know. Okay. The next explanation that I'll give, I'll go around the room now and just ask direct questions to the students, you know. Are you playing football next week? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. I don't know. Um, are you reading a book right now? Well, I hopefully you're in my class, so you're not, okay? So no, I'm not. Um, are you writing a message later? It's another word we can put on here. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. I don't know. And so on. But then I want to take it a step further to practice the third person in this as well. So I'll say to them, the answer I've got here is yes, I am. No, I'm not. So if I ask the question, is he writing a message now? What would the answer be? Would it be yes? And then elicit the answer. Get them to tell you the answer by looking here. So they're identifying the patterns, they're using their brains and they're thinking. They're doing this analysis, they're systemizing the grammar. So we want yes, he is, or no, he isn't. And we'll carry on with this through we talking about the whole classroom and they talking about perhaps the classroom next door. And at the end of this, normally a one hour class, they've got the general idea of how the present continuous works. But there's one thing we haven't explained yet, and that 
is that these verbs are all action verbs, okay? So normally at this point, we'll take some time to remove the questions, the answers here, and just do a little part on stated verbs. Some people think might think now, ooh, what's a stated verb? What's the difference between an action verb and a stated verb? Well, a stated verb describes a state, not an action. It's a physical state, okay? Nothing physically happens, like playing, kicking, running, punching. Something happens. And stated verbs do not get used in a continuous tense. So some of these verbs could be verbs like to, to see, to belong, um, to agree, in fact, to taste, to think, if we're considering an opinion, okay, to be, to sound, and to hear. These don't get used in a continuous tense. They stay in the present simple tense, which is what we're going to look at next. And there's one other verb that's a stative verb that I haven't written here. Um, you've probably heard this on the television, the ba da ba 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 I'm loving it. <clears throat> Love is a stative verb. Love does not work in a continuous tense. I'm loving it is a colloquialism. It's incorrect, but it's in common usage now. But don't use it in an exam. That's the idea. And that just helps to emphasize that sometimes what they read and hear in the media, the students, is not always correct. So if they have questions about this, it's best to ask. And when we describe that the stated verbs should stay in the continuous tense, that gives us a really good opportunity to clear the board and move on to the um, present simple, to take these verbs and describe them a little bit further as to how they, how they are used. This is quite a different approach to a textbook. Um, I happen to have one here, which, this is a good book, I like this. Um, but the way it introduces this is a, a short text, okay? And it's got some of the, the verbs are put into bold, so they're more obvious. And then it asks the students to identify which verbs concern a regular repeated action, a permanent situation, spoken instructions and processes, with stated verbs, an action happening at the exact time, and a temporary situation happening around this time, okay? This way of teaching, I think, is better because the students have already got the gist and we're not confusing them with terminology such as this because when they're speaking, they're not going to think, ooh, is it a sort of re regularly repeated action or is it an action happening now? Is it an action happening around now? Which tense do I have to use? And the conversation's gone, okay? Um, if we want to clarify the difference between an action happening now and an action happening about now, there's a reasonably easy way to do it. And to do this, we need to draw, and I'm not Pablo Picasso, but we need to draw a little friend on the board here. Okay. And a nice old fashioned telephone, okay? <laughs> Most of them laugh at this because uh, obviously everybody's got a nice mobile phone now, not a 1990s or 1970s style fixed phone with a curly cable. But it gets the point over. And the guy's called John, and we say that uh, John is talking on the phone. Okay. He's talking on the phone. Obviously, this is an action that's happening right now. But what's John saying? I am reading a great book just now. Well, obviously he's talking on the phone at the moment, right now, but he says I'm reading a, a great book just now. Well, just now means here, these days, in this time, 
not at this specific moment. So that kind of clarifies the difference between the two conceptual uses of the present continuous in this context, okay? And with that, with the stated verbs in mind, we'll now move on to look at teaching the present simple to give them the ability to analyze and internalize the grammar, okay? So a little interlude while I clean the board and we'll be back shortly. Okay, so continue to spell incorrectly. So, board clean, let's go again. So again, we'll ask for some verbs in the room. Generally, if they've copied the previous lot down, they'll have the same verbs. So we'll get something like play, drink, write, read, listen, and another couple of verbs from the students in the room will get go travel and watch again. Okay. So this time, again, change the colour of the pen. I will point out that we don't need the verb to be here. We just want I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. Okay. So they've got this. So again, I play. Once again, the answers are going to be fairly similar. I play football. You drink. Ah, let's have coffee for a change. Water gets boring. We write novels. She magazines. It, listen to music. Uh, we go on holiday. They travel to New York um, and watch television. Okay, just going to make a slight change here. Um, as I, what I was doing these I forgot about he, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so I play football, you drink coffee, he write novels, she read magazines, it listen to music. Is this correct? No, because we have he, she and it, he writes, she reads, it listens. Okay, so identify that third person S that people often forget about um, to the students. Now, present simple. We can use, quite often with this, I like to integrate the um, adverbs of frequency. So we can say something like, I sometimes, I need a different colour pen here, I sometimes play football. You always drink coffee. She never writes novels. Okay. Um, it usually listens to music. For example, we go on holiday every summer you travel to New York every Christmas and they watch television every night okay so this gives a little structure using the ad adverbs of frequency and some nice terminations to give this kind of repetition, this sort of repeated activity, okay? Um, now what I'll do is I want to, we've got the affirmative here, so I want to make this negative, okay? So I sometimes play football, I'm not gonna make that negative, but with these, yes, we don't go on holiday every year. You don't 
travel to New York every Christmas. They don't watch television every night. Now we have a problem here because I want to explain the third person, okay? So what I'll do with the third person is get my garrotti board rubber and remove a couple of those, okay? So if we ask the students now to try and elicit the answer from them, you see, when it was in the affirmative, we had an S here, he writes, she reads, it listens, okay? This doesn't work in the negative, so we need to put the S somewhere else, which would be this column here. So once again, these are taken away. And I asked them, so I do, you do, he does, and what was it in the negative? So he doesn't, she doesn't, it doesn't read magazines. Dogs and things can't. So now we've gone from the affirmative through adverbs of frequency, through some phrases on the end of the sentences, into the negative, okay? Then I'll highlight that, much like we did with the present continuous, we're gonna make the interrogative, the question form here. And bear in mind that this uses the helping verb do, or an auxiliary verb, to give it its true name. Auxiliary or helping verb, it doesn't matter, but it helps convey the grammatical structure and the meaning. So back to the green pen. And we're gonna put with do, so do I, do you, does he, does she, does it, do we, do you, do they. So now we have a question like, do you always drink coffee? Okay, and again, I want to do some speaking activities with this. So I'm gonna give them the answers. Yes, I do, no, I don't. And the perennial, I don't. No, I say I'm going to give them the answers. No, I'm going to elicit the answers. They're going to tell me the answers so I can write them on the board. So again, they're analysing, they're internalising and they're helping each other for some of them to fill in these little gaps of understanding or analysis that they have. Then I'll go around the room again and ask some questions related to this on an individual basis, okay? One to one, question to question. And the answer, yes I do, no I don't. Then, We'll take it a step further and I'll ask somebody a question, uh, for example, do you sometimes play football? And then I'll ask another person, well, does he sometimes play football? And depending on the answer, we're going to get yes, he does, no, he doesn't. Okay. Again. We go around the room asking questions again, because this is the more repetition, more recycling, more repeating, okay? Again, this class can take up to about an hour to deliver, but done in conjunction with the present continuous, it clarifies how the present um, tenses work in English, okay? And the following class would be to combine some of these elements using the terminology such as the adverbs of frequency, the right now, the now, at the moment, next week, next summer, today, tomorrow, and things that we had with the present continuous, and every summer, every Christmas, every night. So they see these, ident these words and identify which tense to use and where. And it just helps them analyze and internalize this grammar. Okay. Also, with a lot of speaking in the class, it gives them good speaking practice too, which is another means of internalizing the information. Okay, so that video was primarily aimed at teachers, but I hope students also take a lot from it as to how different tenses can be presented and learned in English. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, well, please leave a thumbs up. If you really enjoyed it, please subscribe. And if you thought it was fantastic, then you can buy me a coffee in the link below. Obviously, if you're a teacher and you want some coaching on how to teach English more effectively, or if you're a student and you would like some classes with me, well, the link's in the description below where you can book some classes or some coaching sessions with me. So until next time, thank you.
and see you soon.